Hey guys, welcome to the vlog. So I'm going to answer some questions that are put to me. And then I'm going to talk about very quickly this Code on the Go series. Don't worry, it's going to keep going. Anyway, my question to you, first question. Is it possible to freelance with the Mern stack? I tried WordPress and it's just not for me. I enjoyed working with Node for one of my school projects and that's why I want to stick to it. Thank you. Sure. If there's demand for the Mern stack or any stack, any technology, of course, you could potentially freelance with it, which you need to do at this point, since you've already have been writing code, you need to just look into the local market, see where the opportunities lies. Uh, I've heard people tell me that in their part of the world, it's all .NET. I've heard other people say in their part of the world, it's Ruby's pretty popular. Uh, other parts of the world, it's PHP. It can be different from city to city. I can understand how you would prefer one type of development over the other. That makes perfect sense. Fair enough. All I can say is that you have to look at the local market demands and then you have to market yourself in the stack that you want to build in. So put up a site. You should have a site. You should show, uh, write maybe a couple articles about Mern show some of the work you've done and then start talking about it and perhaps well in time if not sooner than later you will get people who are interested in professionals with those skill sets and they will want to work with you that's my best advice and you just let the market decide whether or not what you want to program in is viable in terms of freelance work or whatnot Next question, I'm just getting into program, programming and I've decided to learn tools related to web development. I know that PHP dominates the server side of the web overall, but some articles suggest that Microsoft's framework takes second place. What do you think of ASP.NET? I've worked with ASP.NET way back, way back in the day when it was still in beta, beta two. I took a Java based application that I wrote, wrote it all in Java. And then I said, okay, we're gonna see what it's like to develop it in csharp.net and uh, web, it's a web app and uh, very, very similar. Um, when you're using Visual Studio, and I guess it would be with their simple code editor as well, uh, that's where the ASP.net framework really shines because one thing where Microsoft has always been really good at, and that is uh, building IDEs, Integrated Development Environment. A good IDE is always a big part of the productivity of a particular technology stack. Fortunately, they all have good IDEs today. JetBrains company out of Eastern Europe, they produce excellent IDEs. IntelliJ for Java, PyCharm for Python, PHP Storm for PHP, of course. Yeah, so ASP.NET is definitely viable. Again, uh, Look at the local job market. Look at what's available for you in your area. That plays a big role in determining what you're going to do. When it comes to large institutions, is .NET the preferred tool or does PHP still dominate? In large corporations, it's either going to be Java or .NET typically, not PHP. PHP, I'm sure certain large organizations do use it, like Wikipedia is PHP, uh, Facebook is PHP. But I think generally speaking, when you're looking at the enterprise, large institutions, it's typically, typically going to be .NET and Java or Java rather. So, you know, if you want to look at, if you want to work in large corporations, yes, you definitely want to look at either .NET or Java. Next question, if I were to learn PHP, would it be realistic, a realistic path towards getting into a large company? Potentially, again, look at local job listings, look at what technologies they happen to be using. You may very well likely find companies, uh, larger companies who are working with PHP. For example, uh, my brother works for a medium, medium sized business, small, medium, and they do their mobile apps native, mostly iOS, some Android, but mostly iOS. And they do their web stack with PHP for the back end. So, you know, Again, local markets determine these things. I've considered Java, but so many colleges teach Java, so it seems like everyone with a degree knows Java. They may know a basic Java, but they may not be productive Java programmers. To this day, there's still a huge demand for Java programmers, so I wouldn't be too concerned about that. He continues, 
Everyone seems to like Python and Django, but I don't know how fast it fares in enterprise development. It's practically non-existent in terms of the web stack. Python, most of the use case for Python is AI. That's where the big growth has been. And server automation, that sort of thing. You can think of Python like a glue language and an AI machine learning language, although it does, you know, Python Django is used, there's no question, but, you know, as far as how often it's used compared to PHP, Java, .NET, even Ruby, I think, is used much more often, Ruby, Ruby Rails, than Python Django in the web stack. What I hear about Django and is that it is... Um, Apparently, the community is small, which kind of makes sense, right? Because, you know, Python for web is not exactly its main use case. And uh, it works, though, and it's a mature framework. I just don't know how long it's going to last, given where the web development world is going. So once again, when you're looking at your career as a developer, you have to check the local markets. You have to uh, look around out there and look at the, the business realities of where you happen to live in terms of the technology stacks that you choose. Of course, if you decide to create your own software, your own SaaS, then you have total freedom. When I chose to do the rewrite of Studio Web about a year ago, year and a half ago, whatever it was, whenever I, when I decided to pull that trigger, I could use any stack that I wanted. It could have been Python Django, could have been Node.js, with Express, that's what I was looking at, PHP, Laravel, .NET, whatever. I had total choice since I own it. I decided to go with PHP for a number of reasons. I've discussed this in other videos, but that's the advantage. One of the advantages, by the way, when you develop your own product that you sell into, to the public versus freelancing where, you know, you could sell a client on a particular stack. So um, let's say you start a freelancing business and you go see new clients who are not invested in technology yet. And let's say you decide you like Node, then you could sell, sell them on Node. And if you do a good job of presenting yourself and so forth, you probably get a lot of clients saying, okay, let's use Note, not a big deal. On the other hand, if you're a freelancer and you go, you get a gig working for a company and they already have an investment in Java or they have an investment in PHP or they have an investment in Python Django or whatever, to have them switch off of that to some new technology that you prefer, much more difficult because they don't want to abandon the old tech and they don't want to have two technology stacks that require two different sets of skills to maintain. And I think that's understandable. So there you go. That's enough of this car vlog. Um, let me just finish off by saying I'm going to continue to do the car vlogs. But for me to discuss complex questions like I just did, or this is more semi-complex, but to be able to put my mind and focus on that, it's hard to do that while driving at the same time. I was meandering it a bit, especially with these roads where you got all the potholes. So uh, I think I'm going to be doing things where I drive to locations, film driving to locations. I'll do some chat and drive, but a lot of times I'm going to park and then get deep into the subject as I just did here. All right, thanks a lot.